Hello. In this video, let's discuss a new technique to measure delay in RC networks, which is known as the Elmore delay. Now, to estimate the delay in digital circuits, we have already replaced the transistors with a simple, handy RC delay model. So the entire transistor is just replaced with a switch resistor and capacitors which are present at the source and drain of the transistor along with the gate. Now therefore, if I think about a circuit which has a lot of gates, then in that case what happens is the problem of estimating the delay across a cascade of gates becomes essentially finding the delay across an RC network. Now in the RC delay model, we saw that we don't really worry about the 69% uh, pre-factor and therefore what essentially we are doing is we are trying to find a quick way to estimate the time constant of any RC network. So in the previous examples, we've just looked at a single R and a single C circuit. Now we'll see what happens when we have multiple R's and C's or in how to measure the delay in a generic circuit which is known as an RC tree. So now let's first think about what happens as we connect multiple resistors and capacitors next to each other. So let's first begin with a simple single pole circuit. When I say single pole, it consists of one capacitor and one resistor. So if I apply a pulse at the node S, then this capacitor becomes begins charging through the resistor and hence the voltage at one rises. Now we measure the delay from when S crosses 50% of VDD to when the voltage at node 1 crosses 50% of VDD. Now a quick way of finding out the time constant of the circuit is by using S domain analysis. So I can find the transfer function of the circuit by finding the ratio of V1S to Vs of S. So that works out to 1 by 1 plus S R1 C1. So this is the single pole circuit with a pole located at the frequency 1 upon R1 C1 or in which case we say that the time constant of the circuit is the coefficient of the first order of S in the denominator and that is given by R1 C1. Now let's add another capacitor to the circuit. Right? So now we have created a two pole circuit. That is I have now appended my previous R1 C1 circuit with another resistor R2 and a second capacitor C2. And now I want to find out how long does it take for a step function at S to appear at node 2. Now that essentially means that one would expect that the time taken for the signal to travel from S to 2 is going to be larger than the time taken for the signal to travel from S to 1. Because once the voltage reaches 1, it then needs to start charging up the second capacitor C2. Right? And so we expect the delay at 2 to be longer than the delay at 1. So again, the way we attack this problem is by finding the transfer function of this circuit, that is find the ratio of V2 of S upon Vs of S. Now that can be done simply by writing the KCL equations at nodes 1 and node 2. So at node 1, we have Vs minus V1 upon R1 should be S C1 V1, that is the current flowing in this branch plus the current flowing in this branch, which is V1 upon R2 pi 1 plus SC2. So this is the KCL at node 1. And then at node 2, we also have the current flowing in the R2 resistor should be equal to the current flowing in the C2 capacitor. So we have V1 minus V2 by R2 should be SC2 V2. So we have two equations in V1, V2 and Vs. So we can eliminate V1 from these two equations and we essentially get h of s to be 1 divided by a second order polynomial in the denominator. So it's 1 plus s into c1 r1 plus c2 r1 plus c2 r2 plus s squared by r1 r2 c1 c2. Because we want to estimate the time constant of the circuit, we'd like to approximate this transfer function to a single pole circuit. So this is the assumption we make when we do Elmo delays is that we will throw out the higher order factors of S and approximate this to just a first order function. So this would be approximated to just 1 upon 1 plus 
s times whatever the coefficient of s is and this coefficient of s is the dominant pole in the circuit and so we can approximate the time constant of the circuit to be just this prefactor of s which is given by r1 c1 plus r1 c2 plus r2 c2 or in other words i can write the time constant of the circuit as r1 into c1 plus r1 plus r2 into c2 so what we see here now is in the previous case our time constant was just r1 c1 now in addition to that we now have a second addition to the time constant of the system and that is given by r1 plus r2 into c2 now extending this analysis we can also think about a three pole circuit where essentially have added a third rc network to the existing two poles so now i have three capacitors c1 c2 c3 which means i will have a three pole circuit or i'd essentially get a transfer function of v3 to c vs as 1 by a polynomial a third degree polynomial in the denominator and you can expect that because you've added this additional network here now the delay from s to 3 is going to be much longer than the delay from s to 2 and it's going to be much longer than the delay to 1 and so again i can approximate this transfer function using the dominant pole approximation to just 1 by 1 plus as and so this coefficient of s a becomes the new time constant of the system and that is essentially done by r1 into c1 plus r1 plus r2 into c2 plus r1 plus r2 plus r3 into c3 right so that is how we'll approximate this three pole circuit to a single time constant so remember when we're doing this analysis we are again using approximations so these are again giving you handles so as to help you design circuits in actuality to measure the actual delay you would have to act either run simulations or do measurements on silicon now let's look at another three pole circuit which is essentially of this format where instead of connecting the r3 c3 at the second node i connect this r3 c3 also at the first node now if i compare these two circuits what we see is that the delay from s to 3 in this circuit is going to be longer than the delay from s to 3 in this circuit right why is that because the path from s to 3 the resistive path that exists between s to 3 is reduced as compared to the path between s and 3 in this circuit so for this circuit i'd expect the time constant of the circuit to be smaller than the time constant of this circuit and that essentially is what shows up so when i again this is again a three pole circuit so i will get a expression for the transfer function as 1 upon a third degree polynomial but it turns out that for the third degree polynomial the prefactor for the s is just r1 c1 plus r2 r1 c2 plus r1 plus r3 c3 so if you compare these two terms you see that the value of a for all capacitors and resistors being equal between the two circuits we expect that this circuit is going to have a lower time constant simply because that the charging paths to the third capacitor is substantially less than the charging path that would have happened in this circuit so you can draw or rather uh, a few understandings of the delay in a circuit first thing we notice is that delays increase when the number of capacitors in the circuit increase so the more nodes i have in a circuit the longer the delay is because there's going to be charge sharing between the various capacitors in the circuit second when we want to find the delay what we do is we always identify what is the aggressor node that is the node at which the pulse is given so this can either be from 0 to vdd or from vdd to 0 so either you ramp it up to vdd or bring it down to 0 and we look at the impact on the node to which we want to measure the delay to right so we always have one aggressor node and we have a node at which we want the delay to be measured and then we see that the charging delay of a capacitor really depends on the effective resistance from this aggressor to the node at which you want to measure the delay to so the farther the capacitor is from the aggressor the longer the delay is going to be right so these are some of the learnings we collect from looking at these various circuits
before we go into what an elmo delay is how do you set up a formal mechanism to measure the delay let's quickly talk about something which is known as an rc tree so this approximation that we did for a single pole uh, works very well for circuits which are known as rc trees so whenever you want to apply this elmo delay we want to first identify if the circuit we are looking at is an rc tree and what does that mean the network should have only single input node so there should be only one node which is the aggressor node all the capacitors in the circuit are between the nodes and ground so we don't have any capacitors that exist between two nodes of a circuit there is always going to be one to ground two to ground etc and the third thing is we don't have any resistor loops in the circuit now it so happens that when we look at a cascade of gates typically they're going to when we use an rc delay model we convert that cascade of gates to an rc tree so this works very well for digital circuits so now let's look at a specific large rc tree right so here is a circuit an rc circuit which consists of six capacitors c1 to c6 right we have one node which is the aggressor node and we see that every node or every capacitor is connected between the node and ground for example c1 is the capacitor connected to node 1 and it's between node 1 and ground similarly c3 is the capacitor between node 3 and ground so all capacitors are connected from a node to ground and hence you see there are six nodes in the circuit in addition to the aggressor node with a capacitor present at every node so if i want to find the delay at any node i with respect to s then i essentially have the elmo delay formula which says that the delay from s to a node i is the summation of the contributions of all the n capacitors in the circuit and every capacitor will contribute with a time constant now the time constant associated with every capacitor is given by this term rij where rij is a resistance that is common between the path from s to i and s to j right so for every capacitor j i'll find what are all the resistors in the path from the aggressor node to that node and then i will identify which of those resistors are common between the path from the aggressor to that specific node i to which i want to calculate the delay and the common resistance essentially comes in to calculate the time constant that is associated with that particular capacitor so let's illustrate this with an example so let's assume i want to find the delay from this node s to this node 6 in the circuit so therefore if i want to find the delay from s to 6 i can write it as summation of n equal to 1 to 6 now this i've taken 6 because there are 6 nodes in the circuit or 6 capacitors r 6 j times c j now let's start with the first node c1 right so r 6 1 is the resistance that is common between the path from s to 1 and the path from s to 6 so s to 1 has a resistance r1 s to 6 path goes through r1 r3 and r6 so the common resistance between these two paths is only r1 so r61 is going to be given by just the value of r1 similarly we can estimate the other resistances so if i want to find r62 the resistance from R S to 2 is R1 plus R2. The resistance from S to 6 is R1 plus R3 plus R6. And so the common resistors between 6 and 2 is just going to be R1. Similarly, if you look at 3, 4 and 5, the common resistors in all these are going to be just R1 plus R3. right? Because at 3, the 4th branch steps out here, the 5th branch is out here and 6th branch is out here. So at 3, I'm just going to have R1 plus R3. And similarly, for the last resistor, which is the resistor associated with capacitor, say, 6, my resistance is going to be given by R1 plus R3 plus R6 because there I'm just looking at the path from S to 6. There is nothing to be, there is no common resistances that I need to find about. And so if I now want to find the delay, I basically sum up all the three. So I can write my delay to node 6 as, R1 into C1 
For C2 again, the resistance is only R1, so it's R1 into C2. For C3, the resistance is R1 plus R3, so it's R1 plus R3 into C3. For C4 and C5, it's again only R1 plus R3, so it's R1 plus R3 into C4, R1 plus R3 into C5. And finally, you have R1 plus R3 plus R6 into C6. So note that not all resistors will contribute to the delay in the network when you're measuring the delay from S to 6. Like R4 is going to contribute if you're going to measure the delay from S to 4. If you're going to measure the delay from S to 5, then R5 is going to contribute. R6 will not contribute, right? So just because you have six resistors in the circuit, not all resistors may necessarily contribute to the delay at all nodes. However, all the capacitors will contribute to the delay. Now let's look at another example. Let's say we want to measure the delay from the aggressor node S to node 4. The method is very simple. We will break down the contributions due to every capacitor. So if I want to find the contribution of C1, then it's essentially the resistor that is common between S to 1 and between S to 4. So S to 4 has the path R1 plus R3 plus R4. S to 1 has the path R1. Therefore, the contribution of C1 is just going to be R1 C1. Similarly, for 2, my path from S to 2 is R1 plus R2. But my path from S to 4 is R1 plus R3 plus R4. And so the common resistor there again is R1, indicating my contribution because of this capacitor C2 to node 4 is going to be R1 times C2. Similarly, I find the contribution due to C3 to be R1 plus R3 into C3. Contribution of node 4 to be R1 plus R3 plus R4 into C4. 5 is again going to be only R1 plus R3 into 5. And 6 is again going to be R1, R1 plus R3 into C6. Right? So again, here you see that because I'm looking at the contribution from S to 4, R6 does not play a role in my delay. R5 does not play a role in my delay. And so if I want to find the total delay to 4, I essentially need to add up the contributions due to every capacitor. And the sum of these individual components is the total delay from S to 4. And this is known as the Elmo delay from S to 4. So the Elmo delay model provides a very simple technique to measure the delay between any two nodes and or it works only in the case of an RC tree. Advantage for us is most digital circuits or most gate cascades can be simplified into RC trees. The other advantage when we do interconnects later you'd see is that this model can be used to model delays in very long interconnects and it cor correlates very well to measured data. So this Elmo delay model is used even to do long data paths over long interconnects.